gamers today we're doing how to counter jd part 2 and this time we're going to be talking about castle rush sieves in this matchup so i mentioned in a previous video i have done a video covering aggro sieves against jd which are french russe mongol english and delhi and the reason i put aggro sieves or castle rush sieves or boom sieves it's un in general those sieves are played like that but against jd specifically how you want to play those sieves so we've done the aggro sieves the next thing we're gonna do is the castle rush sieves how to play against jd and we're gonna cover the most popular civilizations once again i can't do like six different games because that would take a long ass time to do so I've chosen to do a game with HRE, which is uh, would be played very similarly to OOTD, so it's kind of covering two. We're going to do Japanese and Ottoman, which are, I think Jap Japanese and Ottoman are probably the two most played civs, and then HRE, OTD together, the third. So let's get into it. The first game I'm going to show you guys is going to be with HRE. Then I'm going to show you the game with... Um, Ottoman and I'm going to show you the game with Japanese uh, as a third. So H3, Ottoman, Japanese, boom, let's go. So again, um, Ottoman is not necessarily like a, a castle rush sieve specifically, but against JD it's very uh, good to do so. Now, um, I played these games against Louis, so shout out to Louis. For those that don't know, Louis has reached top 8 in the world in tournaments, like last two tournaments now. So he's very, very good. He's probably top seven six seven eight player i'm not sure uh so he's very very good and he was willing to help me play jd and i have asked him specifically to do the one tc heavy aggression with jd because i didn't want him to do like two three tc because i'm making a guide for you guys and most of you guys are probably facing one tc uh, jd attacking you and and so on and so forth so in this one, I will not be teaching you how to fight against JD. In this one, I will be teaching you how to not fight and try to get a castle as fast as you can. In this specific game, my spawn was pretty bad, um, I would say. Like forward gold, uh, deer pack in the front, so I don't have access to that. Wide side, so I can't really wall off easily. This was pretty nice that I can wall off uh, uh, this side. And then berries were like front too, so the only thing I had safe was this wood line, which was nice. But other than that, the resources are pretty open, which um, I thought was good for the video to show. Uh, because, you know, if I had a perfect spawn, then you can be like, oh, but you had a really good spawn. So uh, I feel like this is a, a good one to, to show. So what is my goal? as HRE or OOTD. So OOTD would be played pretty much the same. So what is my goal? Well, you don't want to go mine work because I'm not trying to rush any upgrades. I don't want any upgrades. What I do want is chapel to boost my economy with both HRE and OOTD. So what is my goal right now? My goal is when you rush castle, uh, your goal should be to set up a tower immediately on your gold and upgrade arrow slits. Sometimes uh, you can also do two towers if it's gonna make you feel safer, uh, nothing wrong with that. And sometimes the JD might try to tower rush you. So you gotta be careful with that. If you see JD coming into tower rush, you gotta you know, speed build another tower really quickly so that you can kind of block that and not let them tower your goal. Because if they tower your goal, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So I'm going here with three workers to get uh, uh, 42 stone because the upgrade for arrow slits or HRE is 37. So I'm going to start up a tower right here. I could have put it one tile closer, like here, but this is fine too. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just getting enough wood because I want to make a barracks as well. Uh, can you guys hear me? I'm disconnected from the chat. I don't know if my stream is dying or is it just my Twitch chat dying. Um... Okay, then it's just my stream live buggy. Um, so I do want to make a barracks. If you make two towers and no units, what might happen... I mean, it's possible to do that. Like, just two towers, no units, and just rush castle. But I do like adding spears because if you have spears, your opponent can't just dive in your gold over and over and over and over. Or they can't dive into the wood line. So having some spears will slow down your castle a little bit, but it's going to provide a lot of protection for your units or for your villagers. 
So I'm upgrading aero slits here. I activate emergency repair because it got burned a little bit. I'm getting my barracks up. And now my goal is going to be to just slowly age up, get, um, you know, farms slowly happening too. I didn't get too many sheep this game. I got like, I think like eight sheep maybe. Um, I'm not sure if we didn't discover any sheep or what's up, but yeah, I maybe I have like, I don't know, 8, 10, I'm not sure. So I got like average amount, let's say. So what I want to do in this situation, if my bears were more safe, and this is for any sieve that you try to rush castle with against JD, if my bears were more safe, maybe I would go for berries now just to, you know, get them out of here so I can go for my sheep later, uh, which you will see in one of the later games. But in this game, my bears were pretty forwards and the gold is forward, so I didn't want to... Um, you know, I didn't want to risk losing villagers to knights, especially because I'm just starting off my spearmen. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, soon. I'm gonna have six villagers on wood, and I'm just gonna use that wood to you know add a mill, add an upgrade, add a wall right here, um, continue producing spearmen, make houses, and you know add a farm here and there under the chapel. So that's kind of that's kind of the plan right now. I'm getting the spearmen upgrade. Uh, whenever you play against JD, getting Wheelbarrow is really, really nice. And I love to get it with every sieve. Because uh, you're not going to play perfect. Nobody plays perfect. Even the top players mess up. And it's really nice to have Wheelbarrow so you can quickly run away from um, from the Knights. So sometimes you'll have a late reaction to stuff. And uh, you'll need that, you know, a little bit of movement speed boost so you can actually get away. I can see I'm just walling here a little bit to prevent any run buys. And Louis does a very good thing, which is he recognizes, oh, my opponent is like playing passive, he's rushing castle. So he goes not only for this board, but he goes for my board too. So his food income was nuts in this game. Um, I'm getting all the sheep, I'm slowly adding farms. And as you can see, I'm producing spearmen. I have six spearmen, I need seven minutes, and soon I'm able to age up while getting some upgrades. So just playing completely safe, not taking any you know, massive risks. And um, so there are some questions regarding the archer. Uh, Jean d'Arc as archer, because we all know that Jean d'Arc as melee is the OP one. So I wanted to quickly discuss this. Why did he go archer? Why didn't he go the, um, the melee version? Um, <coughs> against uh, most civs, going for melee version is better. But there are some civs where going archer uh, is not necessarily better, but you don't have a choice. You don't have an option. So what would have happened if he... So right now he's able to poke. He's able to harass me. He's able to pick off a couple of units, you'll, which you'll see with the uh, Divine Arrow in a little bit. He did get a couple of my units uh, at some points. So what would have happened if he went melee? Well, he would have never been able to kill anything nor get any experience, right? So what would have happened is I would have aged up and he would have had Melee Jean d'Arc that didn't really do anything until that point. And she would probably either, you know, die over and over or he would lose the game or the game would go on and she would be level 2 for a very long time because of the tower. So all I need to do if, if it was Melee Jean d'Arc, I just put my Spearman here on hold position. Whenever he goes in, like with Knights and Jean d'Arc to dive, I just put Villagers in the tower and I target fire Jean d'Arc, and she would die extremely, extremely fast. So, um, going range Jean d'Arc at least gives you an option to poke a little bit and try to do some damage. Now, I've had a game recently against uh, Vortex in the grand finals of the EGC TV tournament, where we played Jean d'Arc versus HRE or Prairie, and also in that game he went for the ranged version. Another reason why range Jean d'Arc is good against HRE is HRE usually goes for expensive units, you know, uh, knights or, or has prelates or has met at arms or lens connect. So having the 100 damage when you're level 3 Jean d'Arc, being able to just snipe the units uh, is really nice. And um, yeah, those are kind of the reasons. So just kind of wanted to clear that up. So you can see he's trying to harass as much as he can. I went to get more stone so I can upgrade the second tower. And every time he damages my villager a little bit, I run away so he wouldn't be able to snipe it with the arrow. Um, another question I wanted to answer, which I also received in the Twitch chat, is 
why didn't he just make archers? Well, he went for double stable because uh, or triple stable even. This is a very popular thing to do with Jean d'Arc because if he went archers, he would still not be able to harass this because of the tower, look at the range, right? So he would still wouldn't be able to harass. So the only thing he would do is slow down his army and I would get castle one way or the other. So if he went archers, uh, I would have probably just stopped making spearmen. I would have had five, six to defend knights and then I would age up and go pure knight because suddenly instead of him having a lot of knights, he has knight archer and the archers are not gonna really contribute to anything. So uh, that's why you'll see high level Jean d'Arc players Unless uh, the enemy is fighting them in feudal, they will just stick to mass knights production instead of transitioning to um, archers. Sometimes archers are good, but this is not one of those. So again, he I think killed like... Uh, th that was the first spearman he killed, I think. And you can see like every time he comes closer, the tower pokes him a little bit. He can't dive. If he dives, I have nine villagers here. I just go in both towers. They have arrow slits and they would do a lot, a lot of damage. So, um, right now I'm aging up and I'm adding two stables because I want to start producing knights and I want to keep producing spearmen. I'm getting the uh, textiles upgrade just to have my villagers not die or take any unnecessary risks. And this is one one of the ways you can counter Jean d'Arc and this is one example of just not fighting her like I'm not going out there to try and engage him I'm just chilling I see all his units uh, at some point if there's units here I will relocate my spears and that's it so you can see how much damage she's instantly taking uh, the cathedral finishes and I slowly start working on getting the relics and getting the knights out I got some farms. I am on berries here because I know that he doesn't have anything there. And this is kind of what I mean. You you can see he can't really do anything. Like, even though this is 11 knights, and that's a lot of knights, um, he can kill these towers because I can also emergency repair. And, um, yeah. So his food income is really strong right now because of the double boar. You can see a 17 on gold. Um, so now... My army is a bit out of position. I target fire the hero. Look at that. Target fire the hero immediately. And same thing would have happened if this was a melee hero. And now I'm like, yeah, let's fight. He goes for the heal. The tower is still blasting the hero. I am moving away with my units. The reason I'm moving away is to make him further dive in so he takes more air damage. But also, if my units start dying, Jean d'Arc does not get experience because she is not in range. She dies, I emergency repair, and I go back to gathering. Knight comes in here, I protect, my first relic is in, I'm getting the second relic. And at this point, like, it, you know, since this is a guide, uh, you know, I will continue the, the, the showing, but in general, this is what the guide should be. How to get to castle safely without dying. Uh, why is it not poking the wood line? I mean, he can. I'll just put my spears here and that's it. The TC, look at the range. It's going to be the same situation as, as this. I can relocate my... If he goes here, right, with his knights, I can just relocate my workers here and then he can't do anything about it. Uh, not only that, but if he were to move knights around, um, what would end up happening is my gold would be completely free and I could also counterattack because he doesn't have units in the front, so... Yeah. Like, you, can, you saw he tried to harass here, now I have two spears, so this is kind of off limits. So the first knight that I made, I just sent across the map. Uh, you guys didn't see because I missed it, but I killed two villagers, and now I can start harassing him and putting pressure on him. So he goes to defend that one knight, I hit here, I kill another three workers, and the good thing with HRE is I'm just spamming prelates. Because not only I'm going to secure relics, but I'm trying to be efficient with my units and just heal them up as much as possible. Now, if the opponent was going archers for some reason, or he was going for spearmen, what you can do is continue producing knights and then switch to maybe one or two more barracks and go into men-at-arms with maces, because then the spearmen and the archers are useless and you can use your knights to harass instead of uh, to defend. So again, this is a lot of units. He's gonna try to go in. 
the moment he goes in. I don't think I, I targeted here, but I would target Fire Shock Dark immediately. And right now, I'm just adding more farms. I'm putting 20 villagers on wood because I want to just start mass transitioning to farms. Um, I'm getting the a veteran spearman upgrade. I put relics in the tower, so now they have even more range. And at this point, um, yeah, you can see I'm ahead in villagers because I killed his villagers. I have two relics. I don't need to be too greedy. Like, I don't need to go get more relics right now. I can just sit here and right now I have better economy, so I can just out boom them completely. Now, at this point, uh, this is why I said earlier, at this point, the game should be over because no matter what he makes, I should be ahead, right? If, um, if he ages up and upgrades his knights, then I already have Spearman plus Knight. If he transitions to Archer, I transition to Man at Arm. And I also have Knights, which Archers aren't going to do much against. If he transitions to Spearman, I do Man at Arms. So there's like a, a way to, to deal with whatever he throws uh, from here on out. So here I push out a little bit. I see he ages up. So I know that he's going to be waiting for his upgrades. Like he's not going to engage me now because he wants to wait for his biology and uh, veteran upgrade. So what I do is I pick up a couple of more workers here and I'm going to take two extra relics, which is why I push this way to basically take the relics while having my army there to protect. And um, I'm getting inspired warriors, which is something you can do if you have a lot of prelates. He snipes one of my knights. Jean d'Arc is still level two, by the way. And now I have three relics, fourth one is coming. I target fire the uh, the hero and she is once again pretty, pretty low. I'm gonna just speed up. And by the way, even if Jean d'Arc was now melee form, uh, she would get obliterated by the knights immediately. But even if she does Q, I think Q is like... How much damage is, is a Q ability from uh, Jean d'Arc in Feudal? Does anyone know? I think it's like 20 damage. And I think it's 35. 35 at level 3, right? Yeah, it's 20 damage. These spearmen have 110 health. Knights have 230. So 20 damage wouldn't do anything, right? So I go in. I poke through. And I send two knights on her to kill her. She levels up. But a bit too late. And now he has... Um, you know, he's trying to fight, but obviously it is not going to work out. I clean up everything, do some harassment over here. And at this point, I can keep making units. I can age up. I'm making more farms. And I can go Imperial. I can do whatever I want. So this game was pretty, I, I would say, pretty clean. Uh, pretty straightforward. Like I said, my spawn was very, very open as well. So sometimes you get like back gold and berries next to it and you put a chapel and you have like woodline berries and gold and you just can age up so, so quickly and just have your economy pop off super quickly. But I, I, I thought that that game was a really good showing because I had a forward gold and forward berries so you can kind of see how to adjust your economy um, and you know how to defend. Next game I'm going to be showing you is with Ottoman. Now Ottoman is usually, Ottoman can be played many different ways. Ottoman can be played with uh, one TC all in, uh, Ottoman can be played two TC, uh, and Ottoman can also be played castle rushing as a, you know, as a civ in general. In this matchup I think the best thing you can do as Ottoman is going to be castle rushing. The reason why you want to castle rush is if your answer is Janissaries, you're correct. So, I get military school. This military school, I mean, if you if you can get some harassment, you know, go for it. Uh, I actually didn't scout him, so I didn't know where the gold was. So I ended up literally not doing any damage or any delay on his gold. Uh, but this is a pretty standard opening, you know, nothing weird. Just, <clears throat> um, just Ottoman military school opening. What you can do with military schools, by the way, is if you remember where the wolves are, uh, you can kill wolves on the way to your opponent. You can send the spearmen around and just kill wolves to deny Jean d'Arc's XP. Uh, but you can also do that with scout, and you should do it with scout as well. Once you're done scouting uh, the map for sheep, you can just use your scout to kill some sheep. So yeah, here I didn't see, I didn't know where his gold was, so I went around and his gold was right here. Which he walled off anyway, so... I guess it wouldn't have mattered. 
So I'm aging up with Twin Minaret. Um, you usually want to put Twin Minaret in the back somewhere. You don't want to put it like forward because the knights might pick it off. Uh, I have my military school here. And once again, we're going to go to a very similar setup uh, compared to the last game, compared to the HRE game. So I'm already looking at this spawn. This spawn is a lot better compared to the spawn I had early with HRE. So this is one of the like you know best spawns you can have. I have back gold next to the wood line, so I can just do a little line of uh, walling here. I put a tower, and that gold is chilling. So you will see how much easier it was to defend. I didn't even have to do anything in this game compared to the previous one. Um, I'm getting some stone because I want to upgrade arrow slits, which I'm doing already. And I'm gonna get um, 100 extra stone for another military school because um, in the HRE game, I made barracks to produce spearmen to defend. But in this game, because I'm Ottoman, I can just make two military schools and have them pump out um, spearmen so that I can age up, you know, a bit, a bit quicker. Although I am aging up slower with Ottoman because, you know, I don't have a chapel working for me. So uh, once again, I'm getting wheelbarrow. Remember, it's very, very good. And the first uh, Vizier point I will be using is Anatolian Hills. You get eight, eight extra sheep and you get um, mining for your villagers for the rest of the game. I'm getting a barracks because I want to upgrade my um, my hardened spearmen as well. I'm getting blacksmith for the uh, military schools. And one thing I could have done here better, so he went for melee gendarme. One thing I could have done better here is I should have deleted this mining camp so that he doesn't get experience burning it down. Um, but, you know, that's a small thing. So here we do a little dance. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to go in because Jean d'Arc is going to do the Q and do 20 damage to all my units. So I'm just kind of poking. I'm trying to maybe get a charge off on a knight or something. I'm trying to maybe prevent him from killing that so he doesn't get the XP. It's not a crazy amount of XP, but, you know, it's I think he gets 5, right? So it's not a lot, but... Um, yeah, you, you don't want to give your opponent uh, anything. And now we're gonna finally age up. I decided, so I could have made this like here to be safer, but I had a tower here. I have a lot of buildings, so he can't really punish this. I have seven spearmen right now versus six knights. And if he were to attack here, I can just quickly garrison into the tower. Uh, the units would be kind of stuck here. Uh, the TC would also be firing from this side, so um, going in here would be pretty much um, pretty much suicide. Now I'm getting my eco upgrades. I'm getting textiles again. I don't want to risk knights coming in and just blasting my units. You can see he tries to go here, but he knows he can't. It's it's not going to end up efficiently. And once again, I can target fire his Jean d'Arc with the tower to push her away so she doesn't get experience. I'm making two archer ranges, and everything finishes uh second point that i spent in this game specifically i would say that you can go for the plus one military school with your point in this game because i aged up to castle and he didn't i went for the imam vizier point just so that i can start taking relics okay so right now my goal is to just produce janissaries obviously he has a lot of knights so if i make janissary spearmen that's going to be a really good comp so at this point, once again, this is how your games should be looking like against JD if you're rushing castle. There should be no damage taken if you play it correctly. Now, I know you're gonna say, yeah, but you know, playing perfectly is really hard and I lose units or I lose villagers. But remember, your opponent is also not Louis MT. Your opponent is Joe that, you know, uh, is in gold league. Right, so your opponent will also not have perfect micro and you might even be able to pick off knights left and right. So what is my goal right now? Well, my goal is to solidify my position. My goal is to get upgrades on my spearmen. My goal is to get more janissaries, to start taking the relics and to get third and fourth military school eventually. And I like to add with Ottoman a delayed town center which is what you're about to see. So we're gonna speed up a little bit. Again, he went for my boar, which is a very good play if you're playing against passive opponent. He's aging up with Royal Institute. If he did any kind of feudal committing, it would not have worked, okay? 
I can guarantee you it would not have worked, or at least it shouldn't work. He's trying to capture the sacred side. I'm trying to micro a little bit. He does end up capturing it and gets uh, the experience. He goes for a run by here, but I have my Janissaries. And the funny thing is, uh, I actually make a pretty big mistake in a second. Uh, I'm leaving my relics here. So I make a pretty big mistake and I lose my whole army. So, he captures the Sacred Sides, he's about to level up. And um, I haven't played too much against JD, like, high level in practice. Like, I've played some games, but I don't have, like, hundreds of games or even tens of games. Uh, so, in this game, I was like, oh, everything went smooth as fuck. Like, for sure, I can fight him now and I can just kill him, right? But, the Royal... The, the, the veteran royal knights with biology because I just assumed he's gonna go guild hall I, I didn't even think that he, he went royal institute so if you look at the army supply it's looking pretty good for me he gets a really good run by here and picks off a lot of my units which was obviously not very good for me he gets some harassment done he gets away so I'm like okay I should start walling right so this doesn't happen again AK solidify my position and this is a lot of knights right don't get me wrong but I thought I got this in the bag like if I if I had more experience and if I thought oh, I'm gonna lose this I would just go back right I would just defend here uh, but he gets off a really good engagement and uh, I don't have enough Janissaries so this is how much one volley of Janissaries uh, do they do about 100 damage to Jean d'Arc so I didn't have quite enough Janissaries to like two shot her. So she gets in, she gets a Q off, she dies, but my units are now damaged. And the Knights, because they are 310 health, um, they're actually farming my uh, units. And I end up taking a pretty bad fight. But um, even with that, even with losing some villagers and me making a pretty big mistake there, getting, you know, completely off guard and just getting completely wiped out. Um, the thing is, at this point with Jean d'Arc, if your opponent is committing to uh, a feudal all-in or to feudal pressure, their economy will not be great. And in all these games, like I said, I asked Louis to play 1TC because I'm assuming that's what you guys are facing. And if the opponent is 1TC, uh, they won't be able to replenish their army as fast. So for example, right now, uh, Jean d'Arc, oh, that's a big Q right there. Uh, Jean d'Arc does have, you know, he does have um, uh, consecrated buildings and reduced cost for a lot of stuff, and that's great. But I have military schools which produce more units. So even though he will have, um, you know, cheaper units, I will be able to reproduce a lot quicker. So right now he committed fully and just did not end up working out. Now the reason why he's committing fully is because this matchup is not very good for uh, Jean d'Arc or French in the Imperial Age. So you're kind of on a timer and the fact that I have my second TC as well, he kind of has to do something in order to, <coughs> to deal with it. So again, it's like 70 versus 63 workers, but I also have three relics and I have four military schools and siege workshop pumping out units. So I'm gonna just speed this up, you kind of get the point. Um, if he was going for like men at arm switch, I would just continue making Janissaries because Janissaries are pretty decent against men at arm. If he was going for archers, I would just start producing men at arms of my own while having Janissaries and siege as well. Uh, because my economy is better and I have free siege units producing, I can also go for siege control, aka have mangoes plus springles, and he can't really do that because his committal to knights was quite a lot. Now, if you're wondering, well, what would have happened if you went to town centers in this game? You can see Janissaries absolutely melt JD, by the way. Um, so if you're wondering what would have happened if you went to town centers, um, if you went to town centers or Jean d'Arc in your games, I mean, if, if the opponent goes to town centers, um, that's a possibility. But at that point, if you're rushing castle and they go to TC, you're going to just get castle and you can make knights and just harass them to death, get the relics. Uh, but in general, I think most people... Oh, yeah, here, health is so low. 
Um, I think most people will struggle against Jean d'Arc being in feudal level 3, which is kind of what I made the guide for. I didn't make the guide for, like, if you're even and you're both castle or imperial, how do you beat her? Because I'm pretty sure you guys uh, know how to do that, which is just make crossbow spearmen, you know, hand cannoneers, janissaries, whatever. But I think most people's problem with Jean d'Arc and why they're struggling against her is because she gets level 3 in feudal. So I'm here to teach you how to not do that. So she gets popped again because I have 12 Janissaries blasted. And now he can't purchase her back because she just died two times in a row. He kills a lot of villagers here. He kills 27 villagers, which about 20 were here. Uh, but like I said, I have way better economy, way better production. So he decides to tap out so let's go into the next one which is going to be uh jean d'arc versus japanese so japanese is another um very popular sieve so i figured i make a japanese point of view now if you with any of these sieves decide to stay in feudal they don't really have a good response on sniping jd super quickly like archers from japanese are not really what you want in sniping jd so in my opinion, the best option is to get to that castle. So I'm going to open up with Tovara, aka the wheelbarrow. And I'm going to put all my villagers on the start to try and get the berries. Why? Well, before the knights arrive, I want to get all the berries so I can go on the uh, sheep later on. So that's why I'm opening right there. Immediately, I'm going to go four on gold. I'm going to leave four on gold for a while. And the idea is the same like with the other sims I just showed you guys. I'm going to go for Kura Storehouse. I'm going to start chopping my wood. I'm still on the berries getting all the food out. And I'm going to make a tower. And then I'm going to make a barracks. So the idea is the same. Um, Age of finishes. The first knight is going to my gold. Uh, he also is aging up with three, by the way. If you're wondering why his JD is like still level one at this point, is because uh, there are two builds, two builds with JD. You either build a landmark with just uh, a JD, and she gets level two by the time you age up, which will be around uh, like five ish, five ten, and then you know you have instant hero level two. Or uh, what some of the pros have been doing, you uh, age up with Jean d'Arc and two villagers. So your age up is a lot quicker, but she remains level one for a bit longer, but you have faster knights. So you're able to be more aggressive. So I'm going around, I'm killing some wolves. Uh, I do a wall here on the bottom side. So my Kura storehouse doesn't get harassed. I have a tower already upgraded. <clears throat> the nice thing about Japanese is that um, um you get stone by mining gold so you don't even need to mine stone for it and i also got um double broad axe and i get uh, i got the second uh wheelbarrow upgrade too now i'm gonna get a barracks i'm getting some wood chopping right here i have my scout on the berries to make sure there's no knights coming to kill me and i actually tried to scout and i was like wait what is he doing where, where are his units and i missed these completely and I wasn't paying attention because I think I was scouting and I ended up losing two villagers, which should never happen, right? Like, because I have a tower and I have spearmen right there. So this should never, ever, ever happen. But I messed up and it's okay. Like it happens. Then I lose this villager, check W. So minus three villagers to start the game, which is pretty, pretty bad. But the plan remains the same, nothing really changes. And now I am aging up with the floating gate right next to my town center. I don't want to place it too far away because I don't want the knights to kill me. And again, five knights, a scout and a Jean d'Arc cannot kill me right now because I have a tower and I have three spearmen. If some, for some reason, he was like super committing onto this tower or I don't know, I can just snipe Jean d'Arc, I can get four to five outposts and I am chilling. Um, so the next thing that I want to do is get the floating gate up. So uh, we're going to play this somewhat similar to HRE. Um, my goal once again is to get the relics. And I will be using floating gate. Boom, it finishes. And the first Yurishiro I will be placing is actually in the stables. 
So why stables? Well, this is usually the time where your opponent will put pressure on you or try to attack you or be like, oh my god, he aged up, let me, you know, go do some damage. Or the opponent will try to age up themselves. So, uh, so I'm putting Yurishiro into stables, which will boost its production by 200%. So now you can produce uh, Mounted Samurai in 12 seconds. So now my goal is... If the opponent is attacking me, then I defend. If my opponent is defending, then I'm gonna just spam mounted samurais and um, you know just do as much harassment as I can. I'm doing a little escort on the relic. I'm gonna take the relic uh, and send it back home. Um, and now you can see he's trying to age up because if he continues making knights and units, then I will just have Mounted Samurai and Castle Spearmen, so that's not gonna work out. He does a quick wall here. He doesn't, uh, he loses one villager. Oh, he lost one villager here, I think. No, he lost one villager somewhere. And um, right now I'm just using my units to push him off the, the boar um, eco because it's very, very strong. And uh, yeah, I got my Shinto Shrine, I'm getting relics, I'm getting second stable, my farms are going well, uh, I'm slowly adding a farm here and there. And right now, Jean d'Arc, she is melee Jean d'Arc, and because I have so many mounted samurai and I have the uh, Uma Bannerman, I, I'm just trying to kill her, so she's just trying to bail right now. And another thing is, he does not want to use the Holy Wrath because he is probably close to uh, leveling up, so he doesn't want to use the charges in the Feudal Age. Um, he heals up, but I managed to kill Jean d'Arc right here. He buys her back. He gets a couple of units there, and I think she ages, she levels up here. In a little bit. I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, he went Royal Institute once again, and now the game plan is, like I said, this is the point where I'm trying to get you right when you play your own games from here on out there's many things you could do right as japanese you could um i can wall this off really quickly so there's no run buys happening i can uh, go into like pure night pure mounted samurai i can add archer ranges which i will do in a little bit uh you can add barracks and then go spearmen and then onamushas again there's plenty of ways to play this you can add a second TC the point that I'm trying to do and trying to teach you guys is how to avoid a situation where Jean d'Arc is level 3 in level 2 that is how you defeat the Civ that is the main strength of it and if that doesn't happen the matchup whatever Civ you're playing becomes a lot a lot easier so she is level 3 right now and now her damage doing uh, Holy Rat doing 35 damage on units that have 230 health is not that bad. So I'm gonna speed up. I'm not gonna, you know, watch the whole game. Um, so you guys can see how this goes. We do a little fighting here. He has some good micro. I run away. I can heal my units up. He goes for a big push here, and this is where um, I have my archer ranges. And I actually messed up hotkey. Uh, so instead of having like a hotkey on archer ranges, I had it on stables. So I was just producing more mental samurai. But here I fix it, and now onamushas are coming, which are the Japanese crossbows. Um, and yeah, I'm getting age 4. He's gonna go for a push soon. And we're chilling. You know, I have a rocket on my town center, Shogunate Castle, which is doing so, so much damage. And from here on out, um, I'm gonna stick with Mounted Samurai and Onamushas for a while. They can also kite, as you can see, really well and snipe off units. Uh, but in a little bit, I'm just gonna transition into barracks and go Onamushas plus Spearman. Um, to kind of seal the deal. So let's speed up more. And again, his economy is not that great. Um, he is producing units cheaper. Now he's trying to go into horsemen. I have some hand cannoneers too. I'm trying to snipe the hero. There you can see. 
he has to run it back. So again, Jean d'Arc doesn't really have a lot of impact in these games. Doesn't have a lot of, isn't gaining a lot of experience um, fighting me either, because either she's out of range or she's dead. And then even when she gets in, it's like, okay, I'm age four, she's age three, right? Now she dies. Onamusha's are uh, elite now. And uh, yeah, now I just take map control to get some more keeps on the map. Um, I put one Yurashiro in the town center. I'm gonna get second TC here a little bit later. And I just go and cap sacred sites to start some kind of timing to pressure him into doing, you know, something. Um, so here he goes for the engagement and every time he goes in, I target fire my keep castle keep onto the hero. Look how much damage is doing, look at this. And now I move back so that if my units die, she doesn't get the experience once again. And he tries to follow, so he gets experience, but the rocket gets him. And obviously this was not a great engagement for him. My economy is popping off because I had farms for a while. He was forced to transition to farms now, so it slowed down his unit production. And in order to not die, he has to like keep spamming units while you know i'm just getting more and more and more upgrades his hero hits level four but again at this point my economy and my unit comp is very very good so the hero doesn't really represent uh any kind of problem at this point look at my upgrades now i'm just getting everything uh this is where i'm transitioning to barracks i'm going spearman because he is investing a lot into horsemen he is investing now into Spearman Horseman to just try counter Mounted Samurai on a Musha combo, but I'm already transitioning to Spearman, so that's not gonna work. There's a big battle here. Again, the keep is blasting the hero. Um, and yeah, my, my Spearman are elite and just fully upgraded, so the fight does not go and you know, does not go his way. And he ends up losing the game. Every time Hero comes in, I just focus firing really quickly. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So, what did we learn today? Well, one of the ways to uh, beat JD is to not fight her in feudal, to not try harass her at all. It's to just play defensive, put a tower or two on your gold, make a couple of spearmen, and then age up to castle, and then basically fight her with better units, units that have more health, so they're not as easy to snipe. And by the time that the enemy hero is level three, you're also castle, so you have access to knights, to crossbows, to men at arms, so that she can just mow down, you know, your archers or spearmen with one Q. Uh, she becomes um, much easier to deal with. Um, so yeah. So the other sieves that I put in this category, uh, so we, I showed you HRE, Ottoman, and Japanese. OOTD is also there. I'm going to show you guys right here. OTD is also there, which will be played pretty much identical to HRE. You have Ayubid, which is actually one of the best counters to JD. And then you have Byzantines. I have also had success with going uh, same type of castle rushing. You also don't need to mine stone with Byzantines because you get stone for making buildings. So making aerosolite towers is very easy. And then once you age up, uh, you can just uh, um, go for... You can kind of play Byzantines like HRE in a way where it's like you're adding farm slowly. You're going with the... Uh, you can go olive oil landmark or the hippodrome. And then once you age up to castle, uh, you will have the landmark that's producing mercenaries for free. So you're going to get a nice trickle of units. Uh, and you can produce cataphracts in order to, um, you know, fight your opponent. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, then it continues on as usual. And the reason why Ayubid is one of the best counters for JD, I would probably say out of all the Castle Rush sieves, I probably like Ottoman and Ayubid the most. Um, the reason why Ayubids are so good is because you can go Military Wing uh, into, what is it called? Uh, military Wing that produces free Camel Rider, uh, Desert Raiders, which will actually beat a Knight 101. So... You don't even have to make a barracks. What ends up happening is the Desert Raiders will defend you against knights. You can still get a tower. You can still make arrow slits. 
and then you will age up to castle at like 5 30 5 40 in game time you will start your age up and you will start your age up with the uh advancement wing which makes your age up cheaper and faster and then as you're aging up you make double stable or one stable and you produce uh camel lancers which um not only are better versions of feudal knights that jean d'arc has but also they debuff the enemy cavalry so it's a very very good counter so that's it if you're watching this on youtube i hope you guys learned something new today and i hope that you have a better idea of how to play against jean d'arc um this is the second video as part of the three series uh videos guys that i will be making against jean d'arc since everyone has a lot of issues playing against her the last video i will be making is how to play against jean d'arc with boom sieves which is kind of like the mix of these two where it's like you are making some units but you're not fighting her necessarily you're trying to defend with units in town centers so that's it if you're watching on youtube thank you so much for watching uh appreciate it check me out on twitch i'm probably live right now twitch gamers let's keep going